miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Long Island Blues Warehouse. As always, world-renowned EKO Studios, Deer Park, New York, the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. And once again, we welcome you. Tonight, we're talking to a New York City band heavily influenced by and honors the likes of Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, Johnny Winter, Big Mama Thornton, just to name a few. They performed festivals around the U.S. to New York City's B.B. Kings, Irving Plaza, the Highline Ballroom, and the Iridium. Tonight, we welcome and say hello to Roof Records recording artists, Jane Lee Hooker. <laughs> Everything gonna be all right this morning,
yeah. This week's featured artist, Jane Lee Hooker. Roof Records recording artist. I'm going to start with Dana Danger Athens after she sips that water. Well deserved, mind you. Oh, thank you. Got a few degrees hotter in here. Oh, just, yeah, a few. Good job, kid. Great job. Coming out of the gate strong, I got to begin by saying. A Muddy Waters fan. Were you listening to him at an early age? Uh, to me, not as early as uh, others. As, as others, correct. Okay, okay. Better late than never. Yeah, for real. You know what? What a discovery. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested. I'm looking forward to learning about your background and history. We're going to get into a second. But whatever you did before to where you got to, to how you got to where you are today, very cool. Oh. Very cool. So let's get Thank into that. Much. Let's talk about where you began musically. Were you singing at an early, early age? Uh, yes. I grew up in a very musical house with an opera singer mother. Okay. And a father who played keyboards and... In church, so lots of gospel, which is like the beginning of the blues. So 100%. it was a natural progression. What a great beginning for you! Great teachers to have. There's not oh, a yeah. better education you're going to get musically. In than, house, apparently. Like boarding school. I'm with you, kid. <laughs> I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's uh, let's talk about junior high, high school days. Are you singing in school projects, garage bands? What are you doing? Um, high in, in your te in your early teens, musically, I was doing like more musical theater uh, okay. style, and actually teenager. And then I was in a classic rock cover band at the end of high school, where I replaced like, a thirty year old man. Were you doing like Pat Benatar and stuff like that? Uh, a little of that. I was singing Zeppel Queen. Zeppelin. I was singing no, no Zeppelin in that one. All right, uh, all right. It was more. It was actually more. I guess classic more pop. Poppy, I don't know. Female rockers and no, I was and, male, and well and Freddie and Mercury. Journey. Well, Freddie Mercury. I could see you doing <laughs> I Freddie was Mercury. Singing all kinds of crazy. You were doing Journey too. Yeah, it was a mixed cover band, very mixed. You went through a little phase oh, with yeah. the classic rock thing. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Were you playing in like your own bands? Were you? Did um, you I was playing solo acoustic. You played solo. Guitar. You played guitar yeah, as well. At the time, yeah. That's exciting. That's ex do you do acoustic solo gigs on your own ever? I do today. I do sometimes, but my focus is Jane Lee Hooker now. But this is I gotta, the priority, I gotta sure. keep playing, though, keep, to, to just write. Keep the chops yeah, up and uh, to keep yeah. the creative mm -hmm. juices flowing. Exactly. I'm with you, kid. I'm with you. Uh, Jane Lee Hooker's been around since 2013. You guys joined Roof Record, uh, 2012. Last year, 2015, you got signed by Roof Records, <laughs> this great world renowned blues label. And you guys have been with them for about a year now. Let's talk about uh, before th that time frame, right before Jane Lee Hooker. What were you doing right before the, these five girls joining Jane Lee Hooker? W w were you playing in another band before this? How did whatever you were doing before come to Jane Lee Hooker? Can you share that with us? Sure. I was singing in my own band, uh, Dana Athens, me. And A Dana then, Athens thing. And Yeah, Dana Athens and a few. And, but then I was also just, people would ask me to just come in and, sit in, so I was sitting in with a big band, like a jazz 13-piece band, but mixed with burlesque in the, the slipper room and a fan of Jane Lee Hooker who told all of her friends that they, they were looking for a new singer, told someone and he saw me at the slipper room and then the band found me. Where was, was, was the slipper in room? Is that New York City? City? Yeah, it's a burlesque club in New York City. I was gonna say, it sounds like a strip club. <laughs> it was a burlesque club. Okay, yeah. very cool, very cool. Um, did you know any of these guys before? No, no. Uh, not we had friends through like degrees that no one act, no one knew each other. Mutual, mutual friends. I mean, no one knew me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Great beginning for you, kiddo. Oh yeah. Great beginning. Thank I you. say we uh, jump into another tune. Cool. We'll come back and continue the uh, Jane Lee Hooker journey. What are we doing next, Danger uh, Danger Athens? We're jumping in the water, baby. <laughs> Is it time? We're we're gonna we're gonna do a little wading. In the water. Well, I'm going to throw my swim trunks on in the other room. All right, good. And I'm going to get ready. And Cannonball. I, I say we do it. On, once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> Let's do it. This Sounds is Jane good. Lee Hooker. See that guy on the mountaintop. She likes to rock and she just won't stop. I said we.
This is Frank Lombardo from East of Talk at New York, and you're watching Jane Lee Hooker on the Long Island Blues Warehouse. <laughs> Great job, great job. You guys, um, it's just, I, I, I'm so in love with this project. You guys really, the first time, I was going to do it later. Let's do it right now, Ralph. Let's get this CD. Roof Records, Jane Lee Hooker, their debut CD, No B. I wonder what that B stands for. No bashfulness in the band? Let me grab Tracy High Top if you'll head over to the guitar. Yeah, let's talk to some guitar players for a minute. How you doing, Tracy? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I like that last name, High Top. Thank you very much. I'm guessing uh, it's a stage thing. It's a Cuban ancestry. A Cuban ancestry. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Let's talk about when you began musically. How old were you when you picked one of these things up and started playing? Um, were you a young child yourself? I started playing drums at around five. You started with the kit? Yep. And then, How long uh, did that last? For Forever. You still play today? Yes, occasionally. but uh, This is the passion. Well, they're both the passion. They're both, yes, I'm very passionate about music and playing. But uh, I, I can yes. definitely figure that out without but you sharing that. Yeah, tremendous job. But okay, so when did you finally pick up a guitar? Probably uh, around 12 or 13. What was the influence? Well, you know, my parents wouldn't let me play drums late into the evening after they came home from work. So I would go and play the guitar. And uh, that's how I started playing. When, what kind of music were you listening to as a kid? Were you, were you weren't listening to blues at an early age, were you? I was listening to a lot of stuff, but the first thing that I ever played guitar to probably was uh, Muddy Waters and really? the Rolling Stones. At, yeah. what, at what age, approximately? I'd say probably about 13, 14. I, I really get a kick out of that, because so many musicians that take this stage and do this show, that doesn't come till later in life for them. A lot of them are classic rock or, or, or punk or whatever, other things, and then they find the blues later. In your early teens, you were you were a, you were a fan of the blues. Well, I mean, I I loved all kind of music, and I loved the Rolling Stones, and I went back and learned from you know where the Rolling Stones were getting their music from. The heavily blues and, influenced and, those boys, and, and that sure. brought me back to researching you know all of the great people before them. 
Now, at age 13, 14, are you like locking yourself in your room just practicing the guitar? In my basement, yes. In your basement. Absolutely, you just... yes. My parents' basement, yeah. And, and you were passionate with it at that early age? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very nice. I, I only listened to music, yeah. And were you playing live? Were you in any bands like in junior high and high school days? I think I was in a band for a short time in junior high school. We did an amazing cover of the Blue, Ulst uh, Blue Oyster Cult song, uh, What's their big hit? Um, uh, fear, the, uh, fear the Reaper? No, the other one. The other big hit. Yeah, the better one. Steve inside with, no, I can't remember. <laughs> Steve, can you chime no, not in? Not Godzilla, no, no. Godzilla? No. I forget. All right. Uh, anyway. Whatever. So, so you I'm had Burning for You. Burning ah, for you. Burning for Big hit, big you. hit, yeah. So we would play that song in uh, Joe Cusimano's basement on Long Island. That name does sound 15, familiar. I don't know 15, 20 why. times. And that would be it, yeah. Very cool, kid. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, let's talk about the other things you've done out of that project. You were, you were in a punk, uh, in a punk uh, rock project for a while? Sure, yeah. No, I love punk music, and uh, I played in a lot of punk bands. And Mary and I played in an all-female uh, hardcore band that was managed by Hilly Crystal, and CBGB's put our album out. And, uh, yeah, we toured all over the United States. And You toured the country with that We type surely of. did. How many years did that last? God, I don't know. A lot. Seven. A lot. Seven, eight years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And um, joining forces with these ladies. Talk to me about how that began. Well, Tina and I played in Helderado together, and that was really the first band that I had that I had switched from drums to guitar. And um, I loved it because I got to play guitar, and, you know, immediately Tina and I had chemistry playing together. And, you know, I grew up listening to Skinner, and, you know, I love the whole dual guitar action thing happening. So from Helderado, um, you know, after that, after Tina and I stopped playing together in Helderado, I many, many years later said, hey, you know, why don't we start playing together? We'll like do a little thing and we'll take some, you know, 20 minute lead somewhere in a bar. And then this amazing, beautiful band came from it. That's how it yeah. all formed. Yep. That's how Jane Lee Hooker was created. Yeah. The beginning of it all. Very great, great story. Great story. Thank you. Um, you guys play uh, festivals and shows around the country pretty much. Yep. Um, you just did New York City's The Iridium. You did a couple of shows, what, a few weeks ago? We did, yeah. How were those? Great. Amazing shows. BB King's. Sure. Irving Plaza, as I mentioned. Absolutely. The Highline Ballroom. Yep. To name a few. <laughs> Matt, some of the biggest world known venues on earth right here in New York City. You guys have played basically at all of them. Um, do you guys still play? Do you guys play bars at all? Well, we do. I mean, we travel a lot. We we do a lot of shows out of town, and you know where we end up is where we end up, and we have fun no matter what. Where so. you end up is where you end yeah. up. So That's we'll play a bar. We'll play a you know wherever we we are taken. We we will rock it. I got to put that on a T-shirt. I like that. Well done, kiddo. Tracy Hightop, one of the lead guitarists. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me grab uh, Tina T Bone Gorin. If she'll head up to you, though, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk to both guitars. How you doing, kid? Double header. I'm good. How are Tina you? Tina T-Bone Gorin. That's correct. The nickname because you like T-Bone steaks, I'm guessing. You know what? Very much so. I'm a meat eater. You are. And I am seen seeing, see, uh, eating a steak often. There's no vegetarians in this band, is there? No, yeah. The, are there? Yep. Right over there. All right, we gotta can we're canceling the rest of the show. Yeah. We're done. Pack it up. We, we're out of here. We like a nice mix. A nice mix. Band, yeah. All right. All right. Um, the name T-Bone, seriously, you didn't get that from eating steaks. That, that's, no. That's a nickname that's amongst your... People have called me T-Bone from different groups and sectors. Musician and, peers of through some the years. sort. No, just family, friends. People would just nickname me that. So that, that it comes from one person from a circle would say, why are they calling you T-Bone? I, I nicknamed you T-Bone. I'd say, I don't know. They're just calling everybody... Tina, T, the T is there. I get that part. It's a very good nickname to to To, to, to hang on, on to. Yeah, to hang yeah, on yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with yep. you. Well, now that we've gotten that out of the way, yeah. let's talk about when you began. How old were you when you picked up one of these things? I was actually 20. I told him 20. Kenny. 20. Kenny Hahn. Oh, but I was actually 21. <laughs> 
So that's, you were 20. I was 21. I, I said 20, and it was like a roundabout. You yeah. told another DJ you were 20 when you were actually 21. But it was actually 21. And when I hung up the phone with Kenny Hahn, I you realized You said, oh, I my lied. God, I can't believe I forgot. It's a big lie, yeah. <laughs> Why so late in life? What, what made you... You know what? I was a music, obsessively into music. My family was. I had an uncle, cousins, a brother who passed away at a young age who was the best guitar player I've ever heard. And I mean that, out of famous or not... And I didn't play while he was living, and but I heard him play constantly in his room, in the basement, around the house. He passed away, unfortunately, but um, the memory of the way his hands looked and the way it sounded kind of got into me. So I finally picked up a guitar at 21, and I just... I've, it just made sense, and I figured I feel I felt like I knew the instrument at that point, and I've enjoyed it. Yeah, and then I became obsessed, obsessed with it. Did you lock yourself in your bedroom? Yeah, and just smoked for hours? pot, drank beer, and just alone, like isolated myself. And I, I had the, know, I would I have the best parties, uh, solo parties with yourself. Yes, don't. I, I can't relate myself, and <laughs> and kids, kids just say it's no. It's true. At home. It, was, it was a good. There just were, those were no good times. Those were good times. So, so you remember? Yeah, and I all you know, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about real quick things what you've we done. Yeah. What were you doing before Jane Lee Hooker musically? Were you involved in other projects? Um, you know, before this band started, there was a few years where I w I was playing with a friend of mine, um, writing songs, but it, we weren't playing out. And um, you know, before th uh, those years, I was playing in a band that had been touring a lot. This bombastic rock band that was loud like the Bombastic MC5 Bombastic Rock Band Bad Wizard was, was that the, the name, name of the, the project band. it was Bad Wizard and it was it was like the Bad MC5 Wizard. kind of crazy touring the US and Europe and Canada just constantly constantly uh, on the road so that when I finished that I was kind of like home for a while riding with a friend and then this one over here had hit me up to start playing again and that's how this all started that's how it all began yes tremendous Isn't that tremendous a good story? The stars and the moon and the sun yeah. were all aligned that week for really? you girls. Really, I feel that way, yeah. And so do I, and so do I. And based on what I'm seeing in here tonight, I'm thrilled to death at what you guys have become, where you are today from where you were. And great beginning for you as well, kiddo. Great beginning. Keep going strong. Thank you, Tina T-Bone Gorin on guitar. I thank you, my dear. Thank you. Let's uh, get Dana Danger Athens back up there. I haven't even asked you where danger comes from. You strike me as the least dangerous of the bunch. <laughs> That's... I, you got to watch out. Am for I those reading ones. that? Am I reading that wrong? Um, well, similar to T Bone, my nickname came from different people calling me Dana Danger, Dana Dane. Dana, it's exact same yeah. four letter name kind of turns into a, and it just flows. And I'm a klutz. Are so, you? Like I'll walk into. So a, you, I'm a ballet dancer that can, can't really? walk in a straight line. Are you seriously a ballet dancer? Yeah. No I'm kidding. Correct. Yeah. Can you give us a pirouette? No shoes. No. I didn't think so. I didn't think so. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I, I don't want you to embarrass yourself, but um, I had to ask. But um, I, you know what? You guys, uh, tremendous, tremendous. You guys, I tell you, how you guys got to where you are today and doing what you're doing musically, I hope this project lasts for forever because this, the world needs to see this project. This is a great project, and I can't wait to see where you guys go next musically. We're going to talk about future writings and other CDs and other things you're doing. But let's keep it moving. Let's get into another tune. We'll talk to the rhythm section. We'll push the website and talk about a few other things and uh, keep it moving. What are we doing next there, uh, Dana Danger Athens? We're doing are we doing some bombastic type? Of, I had to use that once, mm. the bombastics. It could be bombastic at times. Uh, <laughs> What are we it's doing? our song called Mama Said. You good to go? Yes, we're good Lo to go. It says our... Well, Long Island Blues Warehouse, New once again, tune. we're going to keep it moving. This is Jane Lee Hooker. Once upon a day, almost like a dream, where the whole world's gray and nothing's what it seems. Take a good look around at all you see What you gonna do when it's up to you? Nothing left to lose, what you gonna choose? What you gonna say at the end of your day? Did you just fall in line or did you go at your own way? You got to give the call, let the light your head will Before you know why you're You got to take a chance, I'd rather be dead than in the rain 
This week's featured artist, Jane Lee Hooker. Well done, ladies, as always, well done. Let me grab a Hail Mary Zidroga, if she'll make her way up to that mic. How you doing, Hello. Mary? I'm good. You can aim that mic up a little higher so you can, there we go, this, this way, yeah, you can be heard yeah. a little better. Okay. How are you, kiddo? I'm, I'm well, how are you? You're the uh, short one in the band. Yes. How we doing? I'm good. Welcome to the Blues Warehouse. Thank you. Let's uh, talk about some history with you, if we can. I love that instrument you're holding, by the way. You like my bass? Yeah, that's a good-looking instrument. <laughs> Thank Pretty you. cool Fender. I like it. Yeah. Um, just the color grabs me. I don't know. I just had to make it, a comment it, on that. It was pinstriped by my uh, old art director, um, Al Batista. Al, Al, of, Al Batista or Batista? Al Batista. Not Batista? Of, uh, Batista, he pronounces it. Potato, potato. Yeah. All he's, right. And I, he's from um, Baldwin. Is that, it's is probably not. Here? It's probably not the same guy I'm thinking of anyway. I don't know. The guy Batista that I know is out is out east somewhere, but uh, I don't know. like uh, like um, Bayshore or something. But uh, oh, really? maybe they're related. I don't know. He's a pinstriper, so. All right. Very cool. Let's uh, <laughs> let's talk. Let, let's talk about uh, some history with you. Let's talk about when you began musically. Were you? Uh, is this the only instrument you ever played? Did you ever play anything else, or is this yes. it for you? What'd you play? What trombone. Else? You started on the trombone. Mm -hmm. At what age? How old are you in fourth grade? Ten. ten. About nine or ten, yeah. yeah. So, so at ten years of age, you're playing the trombone. Yep. Do you still play that today? Nope. You know, I, I don't know why I'm going to share this with you, but we, there's a band here from Long Island called the Funk Philharmonic. They're, they're like a, a, a 14 or 15 piece band, huh. like, like eight horn players. The trombone player is the band director, hmm. this guy Ozzy Melendez, who's the band director for... Um, J Lo's uh, ex husband, um, Mark Anthony. Oh, Mark really? Anthony. And wow. um, tremendous trombone player from Long Island. I had cool. to share that with you. Yeah. Um, but okay, uh, so you start. Do you still play the trombone today? No. Um, when did you pick up one of these? I, I was 20, and I really was 20. You was really 20. were 20? Yeah, I was 20. How do you know you were really 20? I just remember. Okay. I don't know. All right, it was a fair question. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. thought she was 20 when she was really 21, I so I had to ask. T-bone screwed up and... Um, I wasn't 21 yet, yeah. You weren't 21 uh, yet. Fair enough, fair enough. What made you pick one of these up? Uh, what was the influence? It's very unimpressive. My boyfriend at the time needed a bass player for his band, his hardcore band, so I started playing. Rewind that whole part, get that out of the <laughs> stuff. I'm kidding, yeah. No, it's, it's, it, no that's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, and you were, t you were 20 years of age, mm -hmm. and what kind of music were you listening to back in those days? New Wave. Just strictly? Was no. that was that hardcore and new wave? Hardcore. When you say hardcore, industrial. What does that, that mean stuff. exactly? What kind of music is that? Can you elaborate? It's like a little? German, like I don't know, and Sturz and Neubauten, Bauhaus, like that Bauhaus. kind of stuff. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah. Not not right now, but another time. But I liked like I liked a lot of new wave stuff. Like New Order was my favorite band. Depeche Mode, OMD. Depeche like Mode stuff, stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. All right, now I can relate a little yeah, bit yeah, to yeah, where yeah. you're coming from. Um, did you, when did you have an interest in the blues? When did that start to take? Did that happen when you met these girls? Did it happen prior? 
Maybe about three years ago. Just three years ago. Yeah. Better late than never. <laughs> Better late than never. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, it, no, I just I'm I'm fascinated with how people go from whatever background they have in yeah. music to how they get one foot on the path into the blues yep. and. You know that's where we're headed right now with I this. Love so, it. Yeah, so it's I, great. I, I, I love appreciate it. it. Um, you, what kind of blues music do you listen to today? Are you a fan of of BB King and Muddy and John Lee Hooker and and all those old blues guys? Do you I listen to all that stuff because my husband listens to it, so I I'm exposed to all that. Very cool. Yeah, very. It's cool. in my it's in you know my family. So, yeah. were you what were you doing right before Jane Lee Hooker musically? Were you involved in any other projects uh, right before this this thing yeah, took off? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Hard, um, I guess it's hardcore punk rock band. Uh, hardcore punk rock. Future X, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, are you still? Um, you're still a fan of that music today, I, mm -hmm. I, I would assume. Yeah. But this is this has become a passion for you now. Yes, definitely. This band is my passion. You fit in great. Yeah. You fit in Thank great. You. you make a tremendous Thank dynamic dynamic to Thank this you. project. So uh, I'm excited to see where these guys go next. And like I said, you make a great dynamic. So keep going strong. Hail Mary Zadroga. I thank you, my dear. Let's, uh, you know what, let's get into another tune. We'll come back and talk to the fearless drummer. Long Island Blues Warehouse, let's keep it moving. This is Jane Lee Hooker. Oh, my God, did it, 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 did it,
Oh, yeah. This week's feature... <laughs> This week's featured artist, Jane Lee Hooker. Well done, ladies. You know, we hit triple digits in here temperature-wise, I think, after that one. Well done, guys. Well done. Let me grab on the drum kit if she'll pull that mic up from behind her. Melissa Cool Whip, Houston. After that one. How you doing, Melissa? All right. How are you? I'm great. A young lady that, if I may say, can definitely exchange eights with the best of them, if I may well, thank say. Thank you so much. Do you mind if I say? You can. I would love that if you would say that. Can I I'm going to say. It, I'm going to say it again. You can take that off if you want. Can you take that off without disconnecting it, like I just did? Do you want to use my mic? I think I can. All right, then leave it where it is. I'm going to just sit funny. Hi. Uh, you look fine. How you doing, kid? I'm great. I'm you out of breath, over. but I'm you good. I'm trying to pick over. pants you too heavily over on here? the radio. Let's talk about when you jump behind yeah. one of these for the first time. Were you... Uh, I was very little. In the womb still? I, I was, and Pretty I had much? to jump to get on the seat. I was that little. I, what, um, what, what age? How old were you when I was you eight years you old. Eight years I was eight, old. and I was definitely eight. Were you eight actually eight, or do you think you were eight? I was definitely eight, because I couldn't buy a drink yet. So I was eight. You couldn't, um, but you couldn't buy a drink yet. I couldn't buy a drink yet. That's so were you eight, or were you eight, or were you fourteen? I was eight years old. Okay, okay. What was the influence? Uh, uh, my, I come from a really musical, enormous family, enormously musical, enormous family, and uh, one of my uncles, rest in peace, Uncle Ronnie, uh, was an amazing jazz drummer. A jazz drummer. Yeah, and I used to sit behind his drum kit in his basement. I had a cousin who also played drums. And I would just g go to their houses and sit behind the drum kits and hit them badly and loudly. and Badly know. and loudly. So, yeah, badly and loudly. Not necessarily and in that order. <laughs> and uh, it, it, my uncle came up to me. He's a big guy. And he came up and he said, I, thought he was, I was like, oh, man, I'm in trouble now. He's mad that I'm playing his drums. And he said, you can't play the drums unless you play them right. So he showed me how to do it. When you say he Jazz showed mode. you how to do it, did he, he start showed, he showed with me like how to paradiddles? No, oh no. No, that didn't come yet. It was basically like how to hold the sticks, how to hold the microphone. We'll come next. Is that going um, to fall if <laughs> you let that go? Oh, God, all right. I no, see what's fine. happening there. It's fine. All right, all right. Uh, he, he showed me this way, jazzy though, traditional grip to start. Okay. Because he was a jazz drummer. I don't play like that anymore. That's how you started though. I can. How do you hold the sticks I today? Don't. Um, we're Probably gonna have a little drum lesson on the do. radio. I play them. Hey, I play them matched like this, so they match, rather than like this. I'm, I'm, you're doing great, by the way. Oh, <laughs> this is my good balancing, shoulder. Balancing so you're the fine. mic and the sticks at the same time. Can you juggle? I Probably. cannot, but I can twirl my stick, so I won't <laughs> do that right now. Though. Break a tooth. Let's let's talk about what you're doing, uh, junior high and high school days. Are you playing? Junior high and high school days. Thank are, you, Dana are, are Danger. You is my mic tech. Are you, are you playing in school projects? And yes, I I briefly joined the school high school marching band, as um, that's fine. Thank you. Dana. As the bass drummer, walking bass drummer. Okay. But they made us wear kilts. You had to wear kilts. Yeah, we had kilts in the marching band, so I said no, and I quit. I'm not kidding. It's a true story. I believe you. I, I, I wouldn't have <laughs> questioned. Like I'm not that. wearing a skirt. I would have never, never questioned. I left. That. Um. Okay. Protest. Okay. What are you doing uh, before Jane Lee Hooker musically? Are you involved in any type uh, of yeah, project? Yeah, I, I, a lot. I used to play in a lot of bands um, around the city. A lot of singer-songwriter type stuff Very I would nice. get pulled in to do. Um, I played in a band called The New Sonics for the a new really Sonics. long time. Is that a new wave kind of thing? No, I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, he's a singer-songwriter, okay. rock singer-songwriter. Uh, very cool. Uh, I played in, um, do you know the Josh Joplin group? You know Josh Joplin? Josh or Janice? Josh. Josh Joplin? I did not play with Janice Joplin. I, I played with Josh Joplin. I'm not familiar. Some a New, a New, New York, New York your City? Your listeners have definitely heard of him. A New York sure. City fella? Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I played on his last record. I did a bunch of shows with him. I've done a lot of... You've done a lot. Interesting stuff. I, I could <laughs> see you being a gun for hire, doing a lot of things. I, to be I, honest. Yes, that's what I was doing. To be honest with you, I could see you doing drum clinics. You yeah, have such on. a technical feel. I do for you. teach, but I, but I, I've never done any clinics because I don't want right. people looking at. We me got a great drum long. center in Plainview. <laughs> the, the the drum center in Plainview. I'd love to talk to, the, to okay. him about having you come in and doing a drum clinic. Cool. I think I think you would make a great contribution to something like that. Okay. You're, that's you're You'd be it sounds like you'd be receptive to that idea. I, I, yes. I'll make the call. I can be talked into Listen, if you, if you never ask, you never know. I think it's worth asking. Okay, yeah, um, I agree with that. What were you doing right before Jane Lee Hooker? I was you, playing with Josh Joplin oh, a lot. The jo oh, <laughs> yeah. that was the last and thing the you did Sonics before. And the new Sonics and a band called Mr. Loom. And I was playing with a 
a singer songwriter named Fawn Segerson, you may have heard of. Uh, I don't think I know the New York long list. That's a New York City guy. Yeah, as well? uh, it's a woman. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. A lot of stuff. I, I great dynamic to this project. Great dynamic to this Thanks. project. Keep going strong. We got Melissa Cool Whip Houston on the drum kit. Thank you. I thank you, my dear. Thank you, sir. We have time, maybe for two more. We're probably going to go a little long, but, but the, the, you know we have a little flexibility with that. So. Screw it. Let's do two more. Let's do another song. We'll do our goodbyes, and then you guys will play us out. What do you think about that, Danger? What do you other girls think about that? Can we do that? What's our next tune going to be? Uh, we're going to bring it down with a little Otis Redding, Free Me. You good to go? Danger, you good to go? Yeah, man. Hi, Top. How you feeling? I'm ready. You're looking good. T-Bone? You're always ready to go, aren't you? Am I ready to go? The answer is yes. Long Island Blues Warehouse, let's keep it moving. Once again, Jane Lee Hooker. Warehouse, Jane Lee Hooker. Well done, ladies, as always. Great job, kiddo. 
Danger, Athens, Dana, Danger. Love it, love it. Dana, please share with everybody the website so people can follow this amazing ensemble of musicians. www.janeleehooker.com Did you say two W's or three? Seriously? www. That's what I meant. Tina's messing up. Oh, man, I was confused. I don't even think you need the W's anymore. All the W's to JaneLeeHooker.com. Just write them all. JaneLeeHooker.com. Correct. Very cool. Roof Records recording artists. And I thank you ladies so much for coming in here and sharing with us this incredible project. Say it again, Hi Top. We, you know what? We're going to talk about that on the other show because people that watch this a year from now to find out what you're doing next week aren't going to care. Oh my God. So, it, I wish we could, yeah, unfortunately. But I'm going to be talking to some of you guys. Actually, when this show is over, I'm going to ask you guys how receptive you'd be to coming to Stony Brook on a Friday, two days before that seafood festival you're doing in a few weeks. And joining me, I'm already getting negative. Right Hey, the, the old saying, if you never ask, you never know. Yeah. We'll stick to the phoner. We'll do the phone interview type of thing. Yes, you guys are going to play the, uh, the seafood festival here on Long Island that takes place once a year. This year for 2016 in August, those of you that are watching the show years from now. But um, I thank you for sharing that. Most importantly, JaneLeeHooker.com, uh, Roof Records recording artist. I thank you so much for coming in here and just making a great contribution to this humbling little blues warehouse show of mine so i thank you all for that you're going to play us out in a minute before you do let's do some uh, some goodbyes i want to start with uh tina t-bone gorin on guitar tina thank you so much my dear great having you in here i really appreciate it back there on the drum kit we've got of course melissa cool whip houston hi thank you thank you my dear thank you sir great job back there thank you can't wait to have you guys in here to do this again over there on the bass We've got, where am I? We've got uh, Hail Mary Zadroga. I, Zadroga? Thank you, Mary. So, so good having you in here. On the other guitar, on the other end of the stage there, we've got Tracy Hightop. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you. Tremendous dynamic you add to this project as well. Thank you, my dear. And last, but certainly not least, the lovely and talented Dana, uh, Dana Danger. Athens, I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great job, kiddo. You definitely kick ass in the blues. And I thank you for the whole blues rock thing that you guys are doing. And I thank you so much for uh, sharing it with us today. So we appreciate that. Okay. Uh, you're going to play us out in a second. Before you do, for the Long Island Blues Warehouse, I am Mark Klein at liblues.com. Remember to uh, check out my live show on Friday mornings at 90.1 FM here on Long Island. Outside of the range, as always, wusb.fm or liblues.com, 8 to 10 every Friday morning Eastern Standard Time for the live show. And remember to check out this studio, EKO Studios. Deer Park, New York, the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. And we thank Steve, Ralph, and Ralph for the killer, kick-ass job these boys always do. EKO Studios, thank you so much, fellas. Dana, you guys are going to play us out. What are we finishing up with? Mean Town Blues. You good to go? Once again, we say goodbye and thank you all again. One more time, Jane, Jane Lee Hooker.
alguien más.